So despite the fact that the Brazilian government guarantees free speech, it seems that de facto certain elements of the government doesn't like it when actual sitting politicians get to speak. This is what happened with Twitter. Uh, they were requested that they block the accounts of certain sitting politicians and journalists and they were requested that they do so in secret without naming what violations do these people uh, have and when twitter refused it actually ended up getting banned in brazil and on top of that they also went uh, against elon musk's other companies so with that in mind we get to see that Rumble was next. And, and they also probably had similar requests from Rumble to ban politicians, to silence dissent. And Rumble, instead of complying, decided to block access to users from Brazil. Now, this, in my opinion, is a very smart move. Because with Twitter, the government also passed legislation preventing people from using VPNs. Using VPNs is something that a lot of people in authoritarian nations like China or Iran, they use in order to bypass the government censorship. And usually if you're caught using a VPN in these nations, you just go to prison for a while. But if you are using a VPN in Brazil, what they can do is to fine you around 6,000 US dollars per day of use of VPN. In other words, crippling you for life. And uh, there's a lot of people that have suggestions and they say, well, you can use this type of uh, security or you can do this OPSEC and it's going to be fine. You need to understand a lot of people look at the risk and reward and they're like, should I actually risk going on Twitter and then end up with a $6,000 fine per that day if I'm caught? A lot of people will say no to that. And I also think that the government doesn't really care if the average Joe uses Twitter. Unless they just uh, want to make an example of that person, they usually care about influential people like politicians, uh, journalists, and those are the ones that can get caught. Because if you're a person from Brazil and your Twitter account starts tweeting, the government doesn't really need to know if you actually connected or not. I mean, it's not rocket science, right? They can get a warrant, get into that person's house, confiscate their computer, and then look to see if they have a VPN installed, and they will figure it out. They don't actually need to trace the connection. It's like they can do just basic bitch detective work, which used to be done even before the, uh, the invention of the internet. Uh, and also, take into account that uh, if you're just an average person and they manage to confiscate your, your electronics for some reason or you left your computer at a repair shop or anything like that and they manage to see that you have a VPN installed and the repair guy is a leftist, well, they can also report you, right? So a lot of people would just flat out refuse to use a VPN in order to connect to Twitter because it's just not worth it. So in my opinion, yeah, the government was actually really smart in threatening with financial ruination to people rather than jail time. Because, again, jail time, like how long would you get for using a VPN? Couple of months, one year, maybe more. But eventually you do get out. Meanwhile, if you're caught and you have to pay $6,000 per day of use in a country where most people don't even make $6,000 in a month. Yeah, that's, that's a bigger disincentive. Like for what? To use Twitter and shitpost? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure a lot of people will find that to be worthwhile. So, Rumble decided to pull the plug before that happened. Meaning that, and, and this is my understanding of the Brazil law, you are only fined if you use a VPN to con connect to Twitter. You can still use a VPN for other things, just not to connect to Twitter. So if you're in Brazil, right now you can use a VPN to connect to Rumble. They haven't passed legislation preventing people from doing that yet. So this is probably why Rumble decided to pull the plug. It is interesting to notice that all the other major companies have bent the knee. Like, you don't hear Facebook 
having this issue. It's because they probably do ban the people that uh, the government requests. I remember they even had the war room. Like at that point, I was like bewildered. A war room? Like what? Brazilian elections. Why does Twitter need a war room for Brazilian elections? And, and if the social media is so dangerous for democracy, why not just shut it down before the elections and open it after? Oh, it's because one party has the interest of using the social media as a megaphone, but they don't want their opposition to use it. Because it's interesting what I noticed. Some of the sitting left-leaning politicians in Brazil, they're tweeting. Maybe they're very rich and they can pay the fine, I assume. And it's usually like the sitting politicians, the establishment, they never get in trouble for hate speech. They never get in trouble for TOS violation. And if they do, immediately uh, the, the free speech advocates are outraged and all the journalists are outraged. You guys remember when, uh, what was it, like a couple of New York Times journalists got uh, banned from X? And oh my God, all the free speech warriors were absolutely livid about it. And, you know, they should be, absolutely. You should be outraged. Journalists shouldn't be banned, even if I dislike them. But it would be nice when the people's press also gets banned. When, when the average citizen journalist gets banned, it would be nice if the journalists themselves would complain. And that's not what we're seeing, is it? So uh, regarding uh, Brazil, yeah, now, now they lost Rumble. Uh, they lost Twitter. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. <clears throat> I know that uh, a lot of uh, Brazilians have tried to use Blue Sky. And a lot of people are also trolling that social media platform. Uh, they're not very happy with the situation right now. Although the, the people that operate Blue Sky are probably really ecstatic because uh, they did it to compete with Twitter. But unfortunately, no one from Twitter was interested in using Blue Sky. But hey, Brazilians have to use it now because there's no, nothing else. There's no alternative. Although I heard they have like a Brazilian version of Twitter there. But even that's not very popular. So I guess we'll see what happens. Um, I do know that Elon Musk definitely wants Brazilians on his platform. Because Twitter is currently not profitable and a lot of ad revenue was coming from Brazil. But it's interesting to point out that, yeah, I mean, the man did stick to his guns. I, I noticed that there's a lot of critics of Elon Musk, and they criticize him when he doesn't stick to his guns, and when he caved in to demands of censorship from India or Germany, and they were accusing him, it's like, oh, but I fought your free speech, and, I, and it's literally the same people, the exact same people that are also livid because he didn't cave in to the censorship demands from Brazil. And it's like, oh, you got all the Brazilians banned from Twitter. It's like, no, the judge did that. But the interesting difference is in, in the case of India and Germany, the governments were willing to step up and say, yes, we want these people banned because such and such. Here's an official order for you to do so. In the case of Brazil, the judge wanted to do it under the table with the express mention that it has to look as if Twitter has done it and it has to be done in secret, which Elon Musk didn't want to do because he doesn't want to tarnish the name of his platform. It's like, yeah, we're just censoring random people from Brazil that happen to be journalists and sitting senators and pastors and etc. etc. So I guess the CEO of Rumble is also thinking the same. We'll see what happens. I, I don't think that other Western companies are going to follow suit. I think like all the other companies are going to comply with Brazilian requests. And it's also interesting that the United States doesn't say anything. For those of you who don't remember, Uganda had their president banned from Twitter back when Jack Dorsey was in charge. And in response, the Ugandan government banned Twitter. And Joe Biden was very, blah, 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 like, free speech, how dare you, cracking down on the freedom of the internet, the freedom of the people, blah, 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 blah. democracy. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe Joe Biden is a little bit more uh, concerned now with the elections, right? Like he's supporting uh, Vice President Harris and uh, all of his energy is focused on that. So he may not notice what's going on in Brazil and... Uh, has nothing to say about the fact that American companies are being banned from Brazil, a country which America is giving foreign aid to. And they could put a little bit of pressure. They could put a little bit of a squeeze there and say, hey, Brazil, knock it off. Uh, maybe interesting if Trump actually wins. Like if Trump wins, maybe they will actually uh, convince Brazil to, hey, knock it off. 
We'll see. Let me know what you guys think, and as usual, I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.